Good job. Good evening, Portland. How are we doing tonight? My name is Steve, and I'll be your web nerd for the next five minutes. I'm here to tell you about a programming language called Erlang and uh, why you might care. Erlang is actually not a new language. Just sorry, Grumpy Cat. You just haven't heard of it yet. Um, it's been around for a while, and it brings some things that really help us solve things in our back-end systems these days. It starts with this thing. And why is this important? Well, when's the last time you picked up the phone and you didn't hear the ringtone? When is it possible to allow your telephone system in your city to be down? The answer is never. And uh, as a result, Erlang was created to solve this problem. There are telephone switches like this one out there in the world today that have been running continuously for 10 years without a reboot. That's 10 years without a reboot. And um, yes, thank you, thank you very much. Why is that possible? Well, Erlang has some things that are pretty neat, including hot code swap. This means you do not have to turn the system off to upgrade it, to fix bugs, and do all those things that you usually have to do with the system turned off. You can keep running. <clears throat> Erlang was also created from the ground up to be fault tolerant. That is, it actually has a let it crash philosophy. Rather than requiring your engineers to write a completely perfect program, Erlang expects that there's going to be faults in the system, and it recovers from them so quickly that your end users probably won't even know that it's been down. Erlang is also a very succinct language. There's four to 10 fewer lines of code required in an Erlang program versus C and Java. This means fewer bugs, less testing required, and your engineers can get more done in fewer hours. Erlang is, open, is also open source, which means it's free to use, free to customize. All the other good things about open source. Who here uses open source? Yeah, just a couple of you. So what else about Erlang? It's cross-platform. You can take your pick of Linux. It'll run on Windows, Mac OS, embedded systems. And if you're that kind of individual, you can even compile it from source. <clears throat> So what else is important? Uh, Erlang is a mature system. There is a complete environment of extensive libraries and design patterns that have been built over the last 20 years to help you create a stable, scalable, highly reliable system in a short period of time. Erlang is also very scalable. You can add a CPU and get basically another CPU's amount of work out of it, uh, up through about 24 CPUs today. And it's also distributed, so you can run your application across multiple computers on the network. So, why is scalability important? Well, as we probably noticed, CPUs don't get as fast every year as they used to. So these days, we're squeezing more CPUs together and trying to throw them at our uh, computing problems. But there's an issue with that. Um, CPUs have to access things like shared memory. Shared memory is like the mashed potatoes in the buffet line. You got, if someone's in the mashed potatoes, everybody else has to wait till they're done, right? You know, just because you got four CPUs doesn't mean it's doing four CPUs worth of work. So Erlang and other functional programming languages try to solve this kind of problem in such a way that every CPU can get directly to the mashed potatoes, so none of your CPUs are sitting around waiting in line. Um, so basically, uh, a language like Erlang solves your CPU performance problem by basically having a new way to program. It's called uh, functional programming. And there are other languages you may have heard about in this family, uh, including Haskell, Scala, Clojure, and F-sharp, which all have some of the same kind of ways of approaching the problem. Now, uh, what else about Erlang? Uh, there's a new thing in the Erlang world called Elixir. Uh, it's Erlang with a Ruby syntax. It was created by the people behind Ruby does some things that uh, Erlang doesn't do on its own, and Ruby people love it because they can learn it fast because they already know the syntax. So where are people using Erlang today? Typically, you've got a company, you've got a legacy system, uh, Java, Python, uh, maybe a piece, a piece of it is not able to keep up with your web traffic. Um, people look at things like Erlang to, take some, to replace that bottleneck and speed things up. Now, uh, who's here has heard of WhatsApp? Yes, their entire system is written in Erlang, and they have 465 million active users per month. There's a little company called Rackspace. They replaced a Ruby app with Erlang and reduced their backup time from seven hours to just 20 minutes. There's a company in the Bay Area called AdRoll. They serve 10 billion ads every day on their Erlang system. Uh, Machine, Show, Machine, uh, excuse me, Machine Zone is one of the top three most downloaded iOS apps. All their back end is in Erlang. And there's a few other tiny little companies you may have heard of here on this list that are using Erlang. So while you may never have heard of it, you may have been using it uh, all day today and all day all your life because it's behind the scenes at a lot of companies. 
If any of this has been interesting, there's lots of places you can learn about Erlang, great books from O'Reilly. Also, uh, please check out erlang.org and erlangcentral.org to learn more. Thank you and have a great evening.